We're gonna go pick up another toy today. Got the first gen, the smaller trailer. We got the canoe, the 14 footer. Just got one strap around the center here all the way around. That thing's, this thing's only going a couple miles down the road and then I just got a bungee under the seat there, it's tight. And we are off. Just a little Sunday afternoon Facebook marketplace action here for you guys. I'm just kind of throwing this video out there, you know, I just, let me just put it this way. I like filming YouTube because you guys watch it, but I also like filming YouTube simply to look back on the content, especially more now than ever, like looking back at the videos of you know, when I was 16, 17 years old filming these videos to then like my first video, like the day after I met Reagan and then vlogging us dating and then getting married and then vlogging the first video with her newborn son, who's now going to be three in July. I mean, there's just so many different pieces or like all the footage I got with my grandfather. There's just so many things that even if there's a lot of people that might not think it's the most entertaining content out there, I want to film it anyways for myself if for no other reason at all now of course i still want to try to create content that you guys like to enjoy but regardless of it i'm gonna film it i'm gonna put it out there so i'm on my way right now i gotta pick up some cash from some stuff that i just sold and then i also need to run by the bank and make a small deposit and then i'm also going to be selling this canoe in the back there I bought the thing two or three years ago, used it a couple times. I, I don't use it. I don't go out on the water for any reason. And it's taken up space that I don't need it to take up. It just looks a little bit obnoxious sitting around the barn and I don't use it for anything. So selling the canoe today, I got a trolling motor that I bought for the canoe and I'm selling that also with the canoe as a package price. And I have the four wheeler loaded up. I'm not selling the four wheeler, but I am taking it to go pick up a new item that I have been wanting for, I don't know, the past two or three weeks. And uh, I've been kind of eyeballing these brand new models. And I'm going, man, I'd really like to buy one of those. And I happen to find one that popped up for sale. I don't know if the guy watches the videos or not. He never really said, and sometimes people do this, like they won't tell me if they know who I am or if they watch the videos, but they'll kind of like respond to you as if like you're on that level and they know and I know that they know. But he's like, yeah, he's like, I'd like to get the injector swapped out on my truck if you have any tips on that. And, you know, I we never even had a conversation about this truck at all. I was talking about buying this specific piece of equipment off him and trying to work out a deal. And so I feel like he probably knows who I am and he's just not saying it. It seems like an odd question to just ask somebody about your diesel truck. Anyways, we're on our way to buy a piece of equipment, sell a couple pieces of stuff. And like I said, guys, I'm kind of in this mood where I kind of come and go into this where I get an idea for something that I want. And I'm like, man, I'd really like to have a, that piece of equipment or that little machine. And so I'll just like sell stuff that I don't use, like the canoe, for example. I'm selling the canoe, the little battery power trolling motor. I'm selling, like I sold some old truck toolboxes that I pulled off of a couple of old trucks a long time ago that we've just had sitting around. And just taking some of that stuff I have no use for, selling it and buying stuff that actually is usable and has some value to it for other things that actually need to get done. So let's go grab this cash, go grab this new toy. I mean, this is a really light load for a 12 valve, but we're cruising around 15 minutes into the trip, up and down these hills here in Ohio. We're at 140 on the transmission fluid temperatures. We're at 720 degrees on the exhaust. It says 720, but you're supposed to add uh, add some digits to that. Um, 690 degrees, 80, 60, 6, yeah. Hanging around 6, 700, give or take, when accelerating up and down these hills. And then uh, boost, right now we're not making any boost, but for the most part, we've been averaging five to 10 PSI. So let's keep at it. I'll keep you guys updated as I go. Um, because this is of course a non-overdrive transmission and I know that there's there's a guy commenting under one of my YouTube videos or uh, my Facebook post he said man it sucks that you got a first in with an automatic because automatics just fall apart on those trucks and I you know I responded back to him that yes the 91 and a half to 93 first gens with the overdrive which is not this one yes they're considered more desirable for like cruising gear 
but these trucks actually do not have a bad reputation for automatic transmission failure in these earlier first-gen diesels. Um, believe it or not, they're actually pretty stout. They hold up really nice. And so I'm gonna see what the exhaust temps read because of course you don't get to choose a tow haul mode or an overdrive off mode. This thing's just always in tow haul mode. That's how trucks were originally designed. And this is like, this is the original concept. It was like, it's a truck, so it's built to be a truck. There wasn't real, there was no cruising gear back in the day at, for the, for these trucks. So we're gonna, we're gonna hop on the road here, make a turn and I'm excited. I'm excited to show you what we're picking up. I will be honest, it is really hard to beat the towing ride quality of a D250 compared to a W250. The front end is so smooth, so soft. And these are not the smoothest and most level roads out here. As you can see all the terrain here. I mean, we got bumps and hills and I mean, a little bit of everything it seems like, but this truck just handles it so, so well. We're at 149 on the trans temp and we've been going for about an hour now. 730, 40, 750 on the exhaust. We got an angry Honda Pilot riding the trailer there. Seven pounds of boost on a pretty flat spot right now before the hill. She's all good. Coolant tips staying right in the middle. Oil pressure staying right in the middle. Everything's looking good. Here we are, highway speeds right now. We're going 70. We're still at 148 on the trans temp. 800 degrees exhaust and eight pounds of boost to maintain this 70 miles an hour. It's fairly flat on this interstate. It's not too bad. Still got about 25 minutes to go until we reach our destination. But well, there's your hour and a half in update. We're about to hit a lot of bumps, but we picked up the package. We're about two and a half hours in drive time right now with this thing constantly running and pulling. Again, super small trailer. Between the trailer, the ATV, and the item, we're probably sitting at maybe 3,000 pounds total. So light, so really light load. There's all these bumps I was telling you about. This highway sucks right here. We're still at 148 on the trans temp, and that's fluctuated up and down about 10 degrees, but it's but it's been staying really close to that number at highway speeds. 890 degrees on the exhaust temps right now, which is actually probably the highest it's been. It's been hanging around 800 or a little under. We're at between nine and 10 pounds of boost, kind of fluctuating up and down one or two pounds at highway speeds. We got a cool truck coming up next to us. Now that, now that's cool. Really cool. Anyways, I'll show you guys around once we get on back to the house. You might be able to tell what it is from there, but I'll show you around once we get back. Assuming we have daylight. And to the few people that are gonna comment, don't put miles on my truck, don't drive my truck. Oh my gosh, that's a giveaway truck, don't drive it. Guys, we are not one of the many companies that, that are giving away brand spanking new trucks where they know for a fact that even if they don't drive it, it's all brand new. And if there is a problem when you win it, it's under warranty, because it's a brand new truck. The warranty assurance is the fact that I drive the truck while I own it, so that if anything sounds wrong, seems off or whatever, while I have it, I can make sure that it is taken in and fixed so that at least by time it does go out the door, to the best of my knowledge, everything is in great and operating condition the way that it's supposed to be. That is the main reason why I drive these trucks when I have them. Because if I don't drive them, how am I supposed to know it's gonna be a good truck for one of you guys? I wouldn't if I don't drive it. Um, and you can't really learn a whole lot about a truck by just driving a home and parking it. Sometimes you have to actually drive the vehicle on a decent trip every now and again. Like this trip, you know, I am literally in the truck for three and a half, four hours today total. And that's just because I had to run some other errands in addition to going to pick up what we picked up. But that's a good test to make sure that this truck, under long hours of operating, it's not gonna have any issues. And right now, again, coolant is still right in the middle, not hot, it's not cold. Oil pressure's right there in the middle where it's supposed to be. Trans temps maintaining perfectly. And this is at highway speeds. I'm going 72 miles an hour right now. And yes, this is a non-overdrive transmission truck. 
on overdrive transmission trucks is that like you can't highway drive them and they're you know like they're somehow like not a good truck or not a good transmission because it's not overdrive or it's a non-integral truck so it's it's not as good well yeah it's it's different but i wouldn't say it's not as good it's just it's just different and it really just depends what you're going to do with your truck if you just want to have a really mint clean first gen and you just want to drive the thing and maintain it and have it run great you can do nothing to this truck except for drive it like this and it's a perfectly good truck for that there's nothing wrong with it everything's redone on the thing pretty much everything maintains great temps wise runs awesome what more do you want i mean it's a 1990 first gen that runs literally perfect yeah there's a little bit of wind noise in the cab that's any first gen you're gonna go get but i mean this thing is smooth we're on a good section of highway here too and i'm telling you on a smooth section of highway especially Truck did freaking phenomenal. A champion power equipment 25 ton hog splitter. You may not think of that as the most interesting purchase in the world, but we do burn firewood here. I didn't even have a splitting ax or splitting maul until like a week ago because I was so used to when I lived in Indiana and I was like 10 minutes from my dad's place. The only place I cut wood was at his place for the most part. So the only times I would ever use that equipment, he always had it. So I just never thought of it. And then once I was out here and I'm like, it's firewood season. I got to go start cutting firewood. I usually always start like right after deer season ends, which in Ohio is like the very beginning of February. I'm like between then and spring in the cooler months when it's like cold, but not frigid cold, depending on what year it is. This year hasn't been too bad. It's in the forties. It's perfect weather to go out and cut a bunch of firewood and stack it for the following year. So I was out there and I'm like, I don't, I, th I thought I had a splitting maul and a splitting axe and all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't have any of this stuff. I didn't realize I didn't have any of that stuff. So I'm slowly trying to build up my small portfolio of equipment to be able to get those jobs done a whole lot easier. This is one more step in that direction. Next day, hooked it up to the four wheel and pulled it out here. Give you a little closer up. I don't know much about Champion Power Equipment. All I know is I saw this one on TSE's website and I was actually going to go and pick up this exact one and I happened to get on Facebook and just as I was like a day or two away from going to buy one, this popped up and the thing is like, it, there's like not even like scratches on the thing. There's a little dust. He said he used it one or two times. You can see there's a little bit of little bit of wood debris in there. Um, the fittings and everything. I mean, everything's just so everything's just so clean and new. Like, look at the hoses. There's no stains or scarring on them. I mean, it looks great. I'm actually gonna put this thing to a little bit of a test right now. This is my first log splitter that I've owned. I've used one that my dad had that was a county line and it's always been great this is obviously not the exact same thing but i'm going to take some of these pieces this is some firewood that i bought and it was just cut way too big for our indoor burner um some of these logs are just i mean they're just huge logs like if i was going to do an outdoor wood burner these would be you know plenty small but for indoor use they're just kind of a kind of a monster i mean you can see these how big some of these are compared to like a lot of the stuff that I split for indoor burning um, by hand. And this is what I got cut by hand here in about two days of getting out here for an hour or two and just cutting away, splitting away. Um, but so I'm gonna test this thing out here on some of these bigger ones. And I got a couple pieces over there that are real knotted up. Um, like this here, this is a piece of walnut. And this thing is just a mangled mess. I mean, it's it's really something you'd almost not want to use for anything, but I saved it and set it aside specifically to test with this thing. So let's get this thing started up and uh, see how she does. He said all you do is turn the fuel on with the switch. Well, there's
here's the first little run. I got the broom to kind of broom off some of the scraps that were getting all over it. Just to try my best to keep it somewhat clean. It's inevitably gonna get wore out over time. Here's what we split. This was out of that pile there. Again, you can look at the size of most of the ones that I hand split that are for indoor versus some of the stuff here that we had bought was just, I mean, this is zoomed in, but these pieces are just really, really big pieces for our inside fireplace. Depending on the size of your fireplace, for ours, these are just big and our fireplace is decent size. Um, so I got all that stuff split down to more burnable size for indoor use. And then this is just pretty much all the scrap stuff that was either super short, like these pieces here, are like 10 inch pieces, 12 inch pieces. They're real small, which would be easy if we had a wood burning stove, but we also have an outdoor fireplace that we use every once in a while, like a burning ring. So I'm just gonna save all this and stack in the tree line next to the house so we can use this to burn when we're just burning fires in the summer and fall just to sit out back and then use all this nice stackable stuff for indoor use. I did let him run that a couple times while I set the log up and helped him push the lever there. Did you have fun? Did you have fun, buddy? You want me to turn it on? No. The wifey here has not yet seen my purchase and she has not seen all the firewood that I've cut so far. So I told her I wanted her to come out here and use this thing because ordinarily wood splitting was just kind of like a dad activity, but now it could be a dad, son, daughter, or wife activity. Look at all this, look at all the stuff that I split. Do you see this? That's a lot of firewood. This is what I did on those two days that I took Marshall out with me. It's a pretty good stack, isn't it? a lot she's actually going to run it a couple times i wanted to show her kind of how it worked because i'm like i got i got some ideas you could be out here helping me split some wood like while i'm cutting off rounds and bringing them over you could be splitting them on this thing and hauling it back with a four-wheeler because we're also trying to get a tractor too so we could take out the wood wagon with the tractor and take out the four-wheeler and the log splitter we could have a you know, take care of the horses. oh yeah we could have we could have a part. yeah horses are the most important part right <laughs> But that'll be fun. Um, but in the meantime, let's fire this thing up and let her run it a couple times. Well, what do you think of the new piece of equipment? How'd you like running it? Good. Useful, you think? Good investment, good purchase, especially for the price I got this thing. I mean, you're not getting the workout that you got before, but yeah. I'm pretty stoked about it. I mean, I mean, I told them in the video. I mean, I like I sold junk that I don't need and don't use mm -hmm. to buy something we'll actually get use out of, and something actually we will need to use. Now, my next goal. Is going to be to clean all this up because that's been kind of unorganized for months now. Spring is for bunch of cleaning. Well, this winter's pretty much been spring. <laughs> it's like 50, it's going to be 50 degrees today and it's middle of February. I'm going to finish cleaning this up and restack this back in there. But guys, for everybody wondering, yes, the first gen did phenomenal. Toad absolutely amazing. It wasn't a super heavy load. Again, only a few thousand pounds between the splitter, the ATV, and the trailer pulling it. But we were going 70 to 75 down the highway. Temps maintained amazingly. Truck handled phenomenally. You can definitely tell when the guy said he replaced all that stuff that he was talking about, like the steering box, steering shaft, and all kinds of stuff. He, he legitimately did. I mean, the thing handled and drove phenomenal. It, super nice. No complaints. Anyways, guys, 20 times entries are live for that truck right now. You can actually enter to win that first gen. 
And every one dollar is going to get you 20 entries right now. And that does end on this Sunday. It's our second highest multiplier of the entire giveaway for that truck. So thanks so much, guys. Take advantage of that while you can. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.